Welcome back to SolidWorks at Home! This is Sean Mars again, and this time I have another multi-video series. Uh, I'm going to be working on a sheath for my brand new beautiful chef's knife here. So in this video I'm going to be going over sketch pictures and style splines. So to get started, we will be getting our sketch picture in. So the general process for this is going to be starting a sketch using the command sketch picture, using the scale tool to get it the right size, positioning it, and adding a transparency if we like. So first things first, I'm going to get this scale to the right size. Now, initially I scaled it based on a dimension that was easy for me to measure, but really I should have focused on the like a uh, important dimension, the length of the blade, and this actually ended up giving me trouble later on when I printed it originally. Um, as you will see here, when I actually scale it to the correct size, it ends up being a little bit bigger. And so my sheath, the first run, was a little bit too short, which I guess this is the reason why you have 3D printing and virtual prototyping, and really I should have just measured it in SolidWorks and compared that to the real life thing. Otherwise, I wouldn't have ended up like this the first time. Next is placement. So I'm just going to drag it so the origin is in a convenient place, but you can use the property manager if you have specific values or you need to re-angle it. The last thing I'll do is add in a transparency. So for an image like this, it's a full color photo. Generally, just using the full image transparency is gonna be easiest. Though if you have a really stark black and white one, then the user to find can be a useful alternative. Uh, lastly, I'm going to save this as its own separate sketch so that I can easily hide and show it and I don't have any other sketch geometry in there. And even if I'm not editing that sketch, I can actually double click on the image and change any of those transparency settings at any point. Next, I'm going to start my splines. So I have a really specific process that I follow for this. Uh, the first thing I always do is construction geometry and any major dimensions. This will help kind of put in some bounding boxes and help define our, our spline, which can be a difficult thing to do. The next thing I would do is just draw out a draft version of the spline, which is just get something on the screen. So try to use the minimum amount of points possible, uh, then add in any sketch relations, do a lot of adjusting, adding and removing points, and then do some kind of evaluation. So those are the steps I usually take to get my splines all ship shape. So the next step is my draft spline, just get something drawn. You want to try to use the minimum number of points possible to get your shape. And so the general strategy is going to be focus on minimum and maximum points if you're curving back and forth. Uh, that's a good place to start and know that you can add and subtract the spline points later on. Next is going to be sketch relations. Really commonly you're going to see these at the beginning and end of your spline because it helps you transition into other geometry. Uh, and you might see it along the length of it to kind of keep us within our bounding boxes. Really common ones are going to be tangent and equal curvature. Next we get into the phase of adding and subtracting points and then adjusting. With splines you just got to know there's a lot of adjusting. I like to use the control polygon whether or not I'm using a style spline or a standard spline but it's a lot of tweaking going back and forth uh, things like this where I'm changing the transparency of my image so I can see that edge a little bit better and then finally we want to do some evaluation you could be doing this at earlier steps as well but things like the curvature combs are going to do a really good job of showing us how this is actually curving back and forth if it's nice and smooth or not and might help us with that, those final layers of adjustment there's other evaluation tools as well that can be really handy so things like minimum raise of curvature or inflection points all of which are found by right clicking on the spline so it's a lot of adjustment, tweaking, editing, and then going and checking with those evaluation tools. So you can see that the curvature comb here is actually gonna let me see that on the end, on the left side of that spline, it was actually curving in the opposite direction. I'm going to finish off the back half of this with another style spline because those are the ones I prefer. But even as I'm adjusting this and adding in more 
points, I'm realizing I can't get it to follow the curve like I want it to. So I'm going to change this to a B spline, which is going to give me more control. The Bezier, which is the default, is going to be the smoothest and generally give you really nice high quality splines. But the B splines are going to be more controllable, especially lower degrees. So the third degree B spline is going to follow the control polygons the closest. To get the actual outline for the sheath, I'm going to offset this sketch. Now I can do that with the main, the larger splines, but I can't do it with that last one because of a minimum radius of curvature issue. So this is oftentimes the limiting factor when you need to offset something. So something like this spline, the farther you try to offset it, the smaller that minimum radius will become until it can't create the spline anymore because technically it would be a sharp corner that it would have to offset to. So instead, I'm just going to basically trace over it and um, use this as an opportunity to kind of build in a slightly different design for the back half there. And I was pretty happy with the results. All right, so that does it for this video, going over the sketch pictures and using style splines, my favorite type of spline. Uh, if you'd like to see more on either of these topics or more in depth, uh, please leave it in the comments below. Uh, otherwise, uh, keep an eye out for the next video in the series, which is gonna be going over working with multi-body parts. So I'll be splitting this into two pieces to make it more easily printable, as well as making a little locking ring to keep the blade in. So keep an eye out for that. Otherwise, thanks again for watching SolidWorks at Home. Actually, I should do the deep guy's voice. Thanks again. <clears throat> Join us next time on SolidWorks at Home.